Hey, my name is Ness and welcome back to my channel. I've took a little bit of an impromptu break because I've been really struggling in my mental health and it's been really hard to come onto a camera and smile when I'm actually not smiling on the inside. But today I'm happy to be here and making one of my favourite videos of the year and that's my best books of 2020. I read 80 books in 2020 which is more than I've ever read before obviously due to situations and I've said previously that I thought 2020 was a good reading year but actually upon reflection when I've actually tried to look at which ones I really 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 liked there was actually quite few so one of my goals for this year is to make sure that I'm reading things that I think I'll genuinely enjoy because out of 80 books I think I only have eight to talk about which is quite poor bearing in mind I think it was eight that I spoke about what disappointing reads so there was quite a lot of just meh in my reading in 2020 if you've been watching my content for some time all these books I'm talking about in this video I'm not going to be surprising because once I like a book I like to like talk about it a lot. There's all different kinds of genres and they're for multiple age ranges as well. We go from middle grade to adults which sort of reflects me as a reader because I read everything and anything really. So if you're just looking to chill and find some book recommendations I hope there's something on here that you might consider picking up. I'm always open to book suggestions so leave me your best reads in the comments and I'll have a look into them and see if I think I like them. So the first book on my list is Clap When You Land. This was a birthday present of Lily and I took this on my honeymoon and I really enjoyed it when I was on my honeymoon. I took it because it's quite a short read because it's written in prose and I think I read this in about four hours. Clap When You Land is the type of book that I had never read before. At its core this book is about sisters and grief. And if you don't know, this book is a young adult contemporary novel. The story is about two sisters who are really close in age. One of them lives in the Dominican Republic and the other lives in New York. And they don't know that each other exist until their shared dad passes away in a plane accident. All of these secrets about how the dad is living a double life come out in the open. And one of the sisters makes an attempt to try and contact the other sister. And the story is all about how different their lives are, how much of a part the dad has played in their upbringings and how they react to finding out that they have family in another country. I really enjoyed this book because like I said it's like something I've never read before. The prose element really worked. I had been worried that there wouldn't be enough depth in this novel and there wouldn't be enough character development just because of how short it looks but actually there was absolutely tons. I'm an only child so I like to read about sibling love and loss purely because it's something that I've not experienced. And it was nice to read a book about siblings which wasn't so heavily focused on the romance element and it's all about their bond. As an only child, I've always played with the idea that one day I might find a long lost sibling. <laughs> so this book kind of played into sort of like a dream for me. And it sort of took me through the motions of how would you react if you are an only child to find out that you have a half sibling out in the world. And also knowing that your parents have lied to you as well for all that time. It was extremely well written and it is my first book by this author but I did then get With the Fire on High which is a book that isn't prose. I wanted to read more by this author and I believe that they're also the author of Poet X which I also have on my wish list. So I was very impressed by this book and I'm looking forward to seeing what the author brings next because I think their ability to write about emotions in books was very well done. There was nothing more that I could have asked from this book, only that maybe it has a sequel. But if you're looking for a short standalone book, I would definitely recommend this one. If you're not new here, you'll know that I'm absolutely obsessed with the Percy Jackson series. I read the first book about four years ago, but I only really acquire new books by buying them secondhand in charity shops because I just couldn't afford to have this many books if I bought them all new. I knew that the Percy Jackson books were popular secondhand and they're very easy to find in charity shops. What I didn't anticipate was that book five would take so long to find and I wanted to binge read the series all back to back. I didn't want to just read one and then wait until I found two, then wait until I found three. I read book one and book two four years ago after I found them in a charity shop in Yorkshire when I was in a caravan but decided not to pursue any more of the series until I had book five. I finally found book five last year and sat down and binge read the whole series and that is honestly the best way to read the series. Another one of my favourite books last year was book five in the Percy Jackson series which is The Last Olympian. One of the problems that I have with a series is that the ending is poor and this isn't just for books, this is for TV shows as well when looking at you Game of Thrones. I really think the ending of a series can either make or break the series. 
So I always have a bit of doubt with the last book in any series that I've ever read. However, when it comes to the Percy Jackson series, I thought book five was one of the best in the series. Book four is my all-time favourite, and then book five, book one, book three, and book two. I thought this series had such a great ending. It definitely ended on a high, and the pace that was built up through the entire series did come to like a climax in book five, which wasn't disappointing. So if you are halfway through the series, I would recommend that you stick with it. If you want to see sort of like my spoiler free thoughts on all of the books and spoiler free thoughts on the books I do have like an hour long video of just talking about this series which you can find on my channel so I'm not going to go into too much information in this one but if you haven't read the series I would extremely recommend it for adult readers as well reading this was very nostalgic and took me back to a time in my childhood which I just really thought was a magical reading experience around the age of like 10 and 12. I will definitely be buying these for my nieces and nephews. If you haven't read these and you're into any sort of Greek mythology, change that now. But if you are looking for any more information, head over to my Percy video. So the next book is another middle grade. I got this as a recommendation of Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. Great channel, go over and watch if you haven't, if you like middle grade. And I'm so pleased that I took the recommendation up of this one. And that is Frostheart, which is an illustrated middle grade. And I just love how much detail has gone into this book by the author. He does his illustrations himself as well. And it's just absolutely filled with beautiful illustrations. And for me, the finish of the book and how much care and detail has gone into the book actually transpires into the story as well. I have it signed. It's very rare that I personally find a middle grade book that takes me really long to get through and that's purely because this book has so much to it. There's so many themes in here about family and friendship and loss and adventure. I paid £8 for this book but honestly the story that you get from it, the effort that's been put into this, this book is worth triple that amount. I feel like I've robbed the author by just paying £8 for this book. This is book one in a series. Book two came out last year and I believe book three is out this year which will finish off the series. This series is set in a snowy world where Ash lives in a small outpost in the middle of nothingness. People live in these little like wooden villages in the middle of nowhere and rely on explorers who travel on their sleighs to different outposts to trade goods. Ash's parents used to work on these sleighs and they went out one day and never came back, leaving him as an orphan alone in this town. However, one day he accidentally reveals that he has the magical ability to talk to leviathans, which are the monsters that are out in this snowy wasteland, which scare these people into staying in their towns. And his ability to talk to them is very like frowned upon and they think that this child is now evil and banish him from their little town. And so starts his adventure. Honestly, he joins the crew of the Frostheart and he thinks maybe if he joins his crew as well, he'll, he may come across the answers to what happened to his parents. If you're looking for a book about adventure and family values, I would highly recommend this. At some points this made me cry because it was really sad, but a lot of the time it had me laughing and hopeful. It's definitely a great book to read for any winter style reader fun that you're doing, but I was seriously impressed with the effort that went into this book. Next we're moving on to adult fantasy and 2020 was the year that I first dipped into the poppy war even though I've had this on my shelf for so long I don't know why I put this off but now that I've read it I am honestly obsessed and I can totally see what the hype is about. Again I do have an individual review of this book on my channel so I'm not going to talk about it too much in this video. This is a debut novel and honestly what a feat for a debut novel. This book is inspired by the events of Chinese history and the modern conflict between China and Japan in World War II. The main character, Rin, is an orphaned girl. Her parents were killed in a great war, so she is a war orphan, and the government mandate that everybody has to take in war orphans because there's just so many of them and she is placed with a family that don't particularly care about her. When she turns 16 the family have the idea that they're gonna marry her off to a wealthy man who is like a lawmaker and they think that by giving him this 16 year old girl they'll get special privileges. So obviously the main character Rin doesn't want to go with this random old dude. So she asks the family, can I train to get into a military college? And if I get in, I won't marry this man. But if I don't get in, I will marry him. 
and because she's sort of like lower class peasant from the south where people generally don't get into these military colleges the family think that they've struck gold here because there's no chance of her getting in but Raina is a really strong determined young woman and she's able to get herself into this college so she goes to this college and she's joining the elite of society and their children and she's training to be a military leader for a war that people think will never happen. They think war can never happen again because of the everything that they've already gone through but what they don't realise is there's a lot of things going on in the background. It is January and I can hear an ice cream van. That has to be a serial killer. The world building, the writing, the character development is absolutely phenomenal in this book. There wasn't a single page of this that was dull. Usually in a book that's over 500 pages, yeah 520 pages, I tend to skim read certain passages or there'll be whole chapters which I just want to skip because it's just taken too long but I read every single word of this book and loved it. I do want to put a small warning out there that if you are sensitive to some trigger warnings I would look up some of the themes of this book because there was times where I just thought what I've read is the most graphic thing that I've ever read in a book and it did come as quite a bit of a shock so if you need trigger warnings go and look them up. But if you want to see any more about this I think I have a 15 minute video on it a couple of videos back so go and check that one out. But otherwise if you're just here looking for a general recommendation adult fantasy war fiction this is your one. Next we are staying with adults but this is like a crime mystery with a little fantasy spice and that is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Honestly what a feat this book is. This is a little bit like Marmite, I must warn you. I did acquire this book because Rebecca from Rebecca Reads was had bought it and absolutely hated it after like 50 pages in, decided she didn't want to read it anymore and asked if I would like it. I took it and I read this and I was absolutely blown away. She hated it, I loved it. I had to know whether my opinion was rare or not so I gave this to my aunt and just said, look, you're either going to love it or hate it and she came back and said, that was one of the best books I'd ever read. So next it has to pass the grandma test. I'm going to give this to my grandma and ask her to read it and see what she thinks of it. Whether it's like a free one or whether she'll actually hate it as well. There's not a lot that I can say about this book without spoiling it because I didn't know a lot about some of the genre elements going into this and it definitely added to the surprise of this book. Again, this is someone's debut novel and I was obsessed with it so I was really highly anticipating the second novel which is The Devil in the Dark Quarter which I have bought. I plan on reading it this month so I'm very excited. I say this month, I actually still think it's the 30th of January. How many days are in January? I don't know. Starting in February. This book is an Agatha Christie-esque setting. A man wakes up in a forest and he doesn't know who he is, he doesn't know where he is and he keeps running until he comes across the uh, this Victorian manor which has a party inside. He knocks on the door and it's answered and people are like oh quite surprised. They obviously recognise him so he thinks I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna wake up and maybe I'm a bit clearer about what's happening to me. However when he goes to bed he wakes up and he's someone totally different and he has no idea who he is, where he is, what's happening. The main character comes to realise that every day he wakes up he is living the life of someone else at this party and at some point in the day this girl called Evelyn will be murdered. And the only way to break this cycle is to find out who murdered her and stop the murder happening. The bodies of the people that he's waking up in are the key witnesses of the event. So he has to piece together what each of them see and their personal ability to have their relationships with other guests to work out who's done it. It's really interesting because the main character is definitely his own person and he's just plumped in the body of someone else but he does take on the characteristics of that person without him actually realizing that he's doing it so if one of the characters is like a really rude mean person he does pick up that trait just ever so slightly so even though he definitely has his own voice as a character he is sort of changed every now and again when he's in different characters which I just thought was so cleverly written. Sometimes he can be in the body of someone that's a very high stature and the way he talks changes ever so slightly and obviously because these people are all different classes at this party and all have different relationships with other suspects he's able to use that 
to further his knowledge of what's happening. This is one of the very few mystery books where the ending I just didn't see coming. I had all these ideas in my mind and they just never came to fruition and just when you think you found it out something else is just thrown in there like a spanner in the works. It was honestly an excellent ride this book. Even if you don't like crime and mystery I still think that people would enjoy it because it's just not your typical book. It is pretty long, it's 450 pages and the writing is quite small and quite compact but I did read it in three days so I think if you manage to get on a staycation this year this might be a great book to take with you to read on a night time cozied up with a log fire. I just wish I could read this book for the first time again. Next is a new adult fantasy with also a crime mystery element. I think if you're not new here you'll have just been waiting for this book to appear and that's House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. If you don't know my thoughts and feelings on Sarah J Maas I'll just sum them up for you. I don't like her books. I started off liking the Throne of Glass series when I was in my late teen years but honestly I just thought they just lost the plot completely going on in the later books and I didn't like A Call of Thorns and Roses either. So going into this one I did expect to absolutely hate this book. If I'm honest I thought it was going to be a hate read for me but this is one of the best books that I've ever read and I'm not quite sure why. This book is humongous. I honestly feel like Sarah J Maas came in herself when she was writing this book. Again I have a whole spoiler free and spoilery video about this. This book made me laugh. It made me cry a lot. It kept me up at nights because I needed to know how this story was going to progress. And the best thing for me was the world building. So I'm just going to open it I'm just going to show you the main map. So this is set in a fantasy world and we're in a city. This is very much an urban fantasy book. And the main character Bryce is in her early 20s and she's working in an art gallery. She lives with her best friend who's her roommate and unfortunately her roommate is murdered which throws her into a mystery about trying to solve the murder of her best friend but also there's the whole storyline about like a missing artifact which also may tie into her friend's murder. In true Sarah J Maas style we have fairies, werewolves, angels, demons, sea creatures which all exist in this city as societies within societies. I say the best thing about this book is the world building because there's so much history and lore and mythology and politics and society structure in this book that it sounds like this book would be boring because of how much world building it does but honestly it's not. There's quite a large info dump in the first sort of like 10% of the book but if you stick with it and get to the character storyline it's honestly phenomenal. There is also a romance in this book and usually I don't like to read romances but I was on the edge of my seat for this one. If you are in your 20s and like fantasy I would highly recommend picking up this book regardless of what you think about Sarah J Maas or regardless of the experience you've had with her previous works. I think this is now out in paperback so if you can get it cheap even better but honestly give this book a chance. I loved it and I can't wait to reread it in anticipation for book two coming out this year. Ah! So the next book we're hop shipping onto a new genre and that is horror and for this book it is Nosferatu by Joe Hill who is the son of Stephen King. I read quite a lot of horror and I'm never impressed with a book that I read in horror. Whether this is Stephen King or whether this is another author across young adult, middle grade, adult, I'm just not impressed. I got to the point where I thought that maybe books just will never make me creeped out or they'll never move me to any feeling towards not wanting to sleep at night because I'm so scared. I thought maybe books just couldn't do that for me until I read Nosferatu in January 2020. This book gave me the heebie-jeebies. And there was a couple of times where I was lying in bed at night and I was just sort of like, oh, I'm a bit scared now. Really, this book is a Christmas themed horror, but it can be read any time of the year. But I would recommend reading it in December and January time. Now, I haven't like prepared myself for this video. I haven't got any information about the book. I haven't looked at a description of it since January. So I'm purely going off what I remember of this book from a year ago. And I can bet you when I'm describing this book, it's going to sound like a complete acid trip. This book is about a girl 
who can ride her bike across bridges and go to a different place where she can find lost things. So for, so for example, when she's a child, her mum has lost her bracelet and she's riding her bike across a bridge and she's taken to this beach that the family went to and she finds the bracelet and then she's able to go back across the bridge and give the bracelet to her mum even though the location of the lost bracelet was of hundreds of miles away. Having this ability has a serious impact on this woman as she grows up. So the majority of the story takes place when she is an adult and she has her own children and she's struggling with some problems. And one day her child is kidnapped by a man in a black hearse style vehicle and his number plate is Nosferatu. Now this man is like an immortal being who kidnaps children to take to Christmas land and Christmas land is his own space similar to like the woman has like this ability to enter a different space this is his own space that is named Christmas land where he kidnaps children and takes the children there and I'm telling you this guy is the creepiest character in literature he is so creepy he is one of the best characters actually that I've ever read about in a book. He's so memorable. Like the image that I had of him in my head, I can still conjure it and I'm just like, oh. So obviously nobody takes the main character seriously when she says her son has been kidnapped and taken to Christmas land. So she sort of takes it upon herself to try and resolve the issue. This, this, this book is incredibly long if I remember correctly. It's over 500 pages long. But again, it's not boring. It's, it's definitely a great novel. I'm not really sure what category of genre that I would have it in but when I read it I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting to read something like Stephen King's novels but generally I rate them three stars because I'm not that freaked out or scared by them but I thought Joe Hill done a really great job on this one. It's not the only book by Joe Hill I've read. I have read The Fireman but I wasn't really impressed by The Fireman but this was just on a different level. It's definitely worth picking up if you like horror. So that's it from me today. Thank you for joining me for this video. Coming back from a break is really, really difficult. So I would appreciate if you liked this video, if you just left me an emoji in the comments or whatever. It would really, really help coming back because YouTube isn't kind to you when you come back. I hope everyone is well in having a pleasant year. It is what it is, isn't it? I mean, it's no surprise really, but it just feels like it's never gonna end at this point. I love you all and stay safe. Bye!